So guys, I just want to quickly touch base and talk about, you know, the game we just had. Uh, UMass Lowell today, RU fans, we had a little bit of a scare. Quite frankly, I don't think a lot of people expected it to come down to the wire the way it did. Nonetheless, that's what happened. Sometimes that does happen after riding high um, against Sacred Heart and against Columbia and winning by, you know, considerably large margins. Uh, Rutgers, you know, had a little bit to handle with uh, UMass Lowell. But look, they are an experienced team. I told you on the uh, video the other day that they were not going to be a slouch. Remember, they scored, I think, 89 points on Columbia. They scored, I think, around 104 points uh, their first game. They're an experienced team. You got some super seniors on there. You got people all in their you know, early 20s. These are not you know young players. Um, Cliff had a double-double, a uh, upwards of 20 points. You know, I think he had 15 rebounds, 22 points, something of that nature. I'm sorry, you know, you could tell I'm not in front of my computer. I'm not in the little studio right now, so it's a little bit uh, more difficult, and I apologize for that. I'll do a video with a little more stats and stuff as we start talking about the next game, and we start, uh, you know, discussing this a little more in depth. Um but once again, you saw Cam Spencer doing his thing. You saw Cliff Amori doing his thing. Uh, you saw, I mean, Simpson. How about Simpson hitting all of his free throws, hitting his free throws in clutch moments. Um, Hyatt contributing where he needed to. Spencer contributing where he needed to. Uh, other guys picking up minutes and doing what they had to do to bring home a victory. While it wasn't maybe, you know, what we've been used to, what we're hoping um, this was this team is no slouch, and not every team that's from a conference that's not you know a major you know power five conference is always going to be a pushover, especially when they sense that they might be able to get an upset and they're a respectable team themselves. Um, so nothing to necessarily be worried about, especially with these guys continuing to do good things. But one thing I did find interesting was you know the. Uh, the, the interior defense, um, I, I mentioned it last week, and I said that it could be a concern just because it seemed like Sacred Heart was getting a lot of good quality looks at the rim. They were driving. They were getting into the paint. It seemed to be causing some trouble for us. If you look at this game and, you know, towards the end of the game, more so... UMass Lowell was getting perimeter points, and they are known to be able to get perimeter points. But earlier in the game and earlier in the second half, they weren't really getting perimeter points. They were doing a lot of damage down low. They were finding a lot of success driving to the hoop. Now, I'm interested in watching that going forward. We know Cliff is a, is a serious rim protector. We know he's one of the best big men in the country. We know he's one of the best centers in the Big Ten. Um, and I'm not putting this all on him, but it's interesting that teams early on in the season, one of the weaknesses it looks like we have is teams getting into the paint. Now, this is a game we did win at the end of the day relatively decisively. And if you look at the points that, um, and I wouldn't say relatively decisively, but I would say, you know, it was... While it was in doubt to some extent at certain points of the game, it wasn't as if we were ever trailing, put it that way. Um, so we also held a team that has scored 89 and over 100 points to a lower total. So our defense is still there, but I am noticing a trend with this: these points in the paint and driving to the basket. I'm not positive if that's a reflection of our team trying to stay out of foul trouble trying to just play smarter and once somebody beats you to the rim, just allowing them to kind of go up. I'm not sure if that's the type of defense we're playing or if that has something to do with it. I'm not sure in general, but I am anxious and curious to see where that goes as the season progresses because when we start playing opponents that may be more formidable, we're going to need to be able to protect the rim a little bit better and we're going to be able to need to position ourselves a little bit better in the paint when people do attempt to drive the way they do. So 
a little bit of a of a of a departure from where we started the first two games of the season. But you're seeing the guys who we want to see continue to step up. I think it's again just really intriguing that Derek Simpson is getting that the minutes he's getting, contributing the way he's contributing, and and really shows no signs of being a young person or that the stage or the speed of the game is too big for him. And that is absolutely huge when you're trying to transition. Cam Spencer, same thing. And Cliff looks up to par, to say the least. I'm just a little concerned about that interior defense. The elephant in the room is obviously Paul Mulcahy. He left the game towards the end of the first half. He did not return. From what I understood, and I wasn't at the game this time, but from what I understood with the broadcast... He came out, he tried to work out a little bit, and then it was ultimately decided he wouldn't return to the game. I don't know if that was precautionary, if he could in a bind, or if he couldn't. I did notice when he was cheering on the side on the bench, he grabbed his shoulder again as if his shoulder was bothering him. So that's obviously something to monitor. I know he heard it against Columbia going all out for the ball. You can't change a player the way they are, especially a guy like Paul. And Pike's words, he's tough as nails. But you want to monitor that and you you want to hope he stays healthy. And if, and if you might need to hold him out of game or hold him out of practice a little bit to try to get him fully up to speed, you want to do that. I don't know if Paul being out in the second half had anything to do with UMass Lowell kind of closing the gap a bit. Offensively honest, it's certainly possible. Paul does a lot of things, again, that don't show up on the stat sheet all the time, and that includes his defense, and that includes being the point guard out there. So I don't know if that might have had anything to do with it as well, and it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, In other news, just to briefly touch on it, I assume many people are football fans as well. Interesting game at Michigan State today. Um, I thought Gavin had a game that, you know, is kind of what we've come to expect. Some inaccurate throws a little high, some missed throws, but all in all, some really nice throws, showing a nice command of the offense, driving the team down the field in certain spots. He, he looks... He looks the part. He's a young man. He's got to improve some things with his accuracy, but he looks the part. They shifted the offensive line around a bit, and I'll break that down more in depth if if I, you know, maybe do a football video or something at the end of the year just to recap it, even though this is primarily going to be a Rutgers Hoops um, podcast for the time being anyway. Uh, But just to touch on it, the, the offensive line shuffling I thought was, uh, it, it worked in our favor. I know Michigan State is not the same caliber of run defense as Minnesota and Michigan, so we were going to see maybe more success anyway. But I do think the shift of the line was encouraging. You had Kyle Manungai with over 100 yards rushing, a career day from for him. I believe it was the most yards, rushing yards from scrimmage of any Rutgers quarterback since entering the Big Ten. So that's absolutely huge, even in losses. And even though the season is not turning out from a wins and losses standpoint the way we'd like it to, even in these situations, it seems as though this program is taking some positive steps forward every time. And that is a valuable thing in general. I thought we had some tough calls. The call in the end zone on defense towards the uh, end of the first half when, when Michigan State got the touchdown should have been a field goal attempt in my opinion. I don't know how they called defensive pass interference on that. Um, Then there were a couple other rough calls in the second half that I think really hurt us and when we were trying to get down there and tie the game and and, and make something of it. But just, you know, it was a great day. I actually had a bunch of friends, and we were were watching both games and and grilling a little bit and hanging out. So it was a good Rutgers day in Jersey. Um, But we escaped some trouble today. We escaped what could have been... You know, something that really frustrated us against UMass Lowell. There's some things to clean up. There's some things to monitor. There's some things to work on. But as I've been saying, there's a lot to be encouraged by. A lot of these guys are stepping up. You can see how this team is taking shape. And again, we're still getting a lot of guys run. We're playing a lot of guys. We're trying a lot of things. And so you can't necessarily, uh, you know, transpose this onto what's going to happen down the stretch against a Big Ten schedule, etc. But you can certainly glean some things from it. Um, one thing I also noticed was just 
you know, the lineups. Pike's playing with the lineups. You had Will Folk in there with, with Reber. You had Reber in there with Cliff. I like that lineup. I think it's an interesting one. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how, how things get played with. I could even see Will Fork, Will Fork in there with Cliff. I like some of these players. I like what Pike's doing. I think he's trying to feel himself out. A little bit of a scare. Some things to monitor. But still on target and on task. I'll come up with some more videos or another video leading up to the next game. I will sit down and break down stats a little better and etc. But I hope you guys enjoyed your Saturday. We got out of there with a win. Let's keep it up. 3-0. Can't start the season any better than that. I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.